Good afternoon, researchers, field agents, archivists, lab rats, and sentient paranormal objects. My name is Dr. Otter, and I am the head of the Paranormal Objects Observation Facility. Before you ask, no, the facility is not affiliated with the SCP Foundation. Our methods are somewhat opposite each other, with the Foundation choosing to keep the anomalous hidden away from the public, and the Paranormal Objects Observation Facility choosing to educate the public as to the nature of the anomalous. As you can imagine, this has resulted in some friction between our two organizations. Many of you know what I'm talking about. However, our goals are the same, which is to protect the world from things that go bump in the night. To this end, the facility and the foundation have decided to cooperate to create a master catalog of all known anomalous objects. So the SCP Foundation has asked me to give a series of joint lectures. In each one, I will be talking about one object in the custody of the Foundation and one in the custody of the facility. And I shouldn't have to say this, but I expect no anomalous objects to find their way into sticky hands today. I'm talking to people on both sides of the aisle here. Just a quick note before I begin, for the next week, the facility will be hosting SCP-1545 for cross-testing with object PO-00008. Volunteers are needed. Sign-up sheets are posted in the cafeteria and the employee break rooms. All right, on to the lecture. Today, we will be discussing two related objects. For the sake of clarity, I'll be referring to objects in facility custody with the prefix PO. The objects being discussed today are Object SCP-1575 and Object PO-0093. These two objects are very definitely related. Item SCP-1579, Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-1579 is currently kept in a sterile environment in Chamber B at a Secure Storage Warehouse 3 at Biosite 66. Separated fragments are kept in Storage Locker 1 in Chamber B under Double Combination Lock. Personnel are not to make contact with SCP-1579 except for testing purposes. Description SCP-1579 is an aged, partially damaged wooden sculpture of a humanoid carved from cedar and standing approximately 3.4 meters tall. SCP-1579 does not seem to rot and shows an above-average resistance to heat for an object constructed from cedar. Additionally, a majority of its surface is covered in a bright green moss, which does not seem to diminish when removed from humidity or affect the integrity of SCP-1579. Barring these particular structural anomalies, SCP-1579 is still wholly destructible, and chips have been removed through testing. Fragments continue to carry the artifact's anomalous effects. When physically touched by a human being, SCP-1579 will shudder slightly, motivated by an unknown force. Following this, the human who touched SCP-1579 will immediately begin to feel a moderate burning sensation emanate from the point that they touch the artifact. Subjects have reported it feels like a very bad sunburn, though the discomfort subsides immediately once the entire body has been affected. Immediately after the burning sensation ends, the subject's skin will rapidly, in approximately three minutes, take on a paper-like texture and entirely peel away, revealing a new skin underneath. The new skin will invariably have features similar to and containing the DNA of one of the following non-human animal species native to Pacific Canada. It should be noted that several of these animals do not actually feature on SCP-1579. Those affected by SCP-1579 acquire one of the following sets of features. 1. Those of Corvus Corax, or the common raven. Subject will bear feathering across torso, arms, and upper legs. Legs below the knee become yellowed and scaly, with toenails becoming pointed and blackened. 
feathers will grow across the face, growing outwards from the subject's nose and mouth. A beak does not form during the subject's transformation. Flight feathers grow back against the forearm and cannot be spread out as a wing. Tail feathers grow downwards from the base of the spine. All feathers are the same approximate size as that of a fully grown raven, multiplied in number to cover the subject's body. Additionally, all feathers recovered from the test subjects have proven to contain identical DNA matches to a particular male bird. 2. Those of Ursus arctos horribilis, or the grizzly bear. Subject's body is covered with brown fur approximately 4 inches long. Additionally, their lips and skin will turn black, with the nose becoming constantly moist. Claws are present, though markedly smaller than that of an ordinary grizzly bear. All DNA samples have proven to match that of a particular male grizzly bear. 3. Those of Canis latrans, or the coyote. Subject will grow layered fur like that of an ordinary coyote. Additionally, the cartilage in their ears will slough off and be replaced with new cartilage in a similar shape to that of a coyote. The subject's skin will turn black and their nose will become moist to the touch. Nails are replaced with black canine nails. All DNA samples match that of a particular male coyote. 4. Those of Pseudochrist regilla, or the Pacific tree frog. Subject skin will become hairless with a green hue with brown markings, rapidly drying out when outside a human environment. Skin is also quite thin. Subject's eyeballs are visible through translucent eyelids. Subjects still require air to breathe. Testing has shown that surface area is not sufficient to allow for proper permeation of oxygen in human-sized subjects. All DNA samples have proven a match to a particular male frog. The specific transformation induced will cycle in the order listed above, regardless whether a new subject activates SCP-1579 or it is a repeated activation by the same subject. If a subject is exposed to SCP-1579 again after a transformation, the second or third shifts will become markedly more painful, with the outer layer of skin failing to dry out and bleeding. Excessive bodily trauma and blood loss have been observed in subjects attempting a third or fourth exposure, with subjects normally dying of shock midway through the fourth shift. Additionally, SCP-1579 was brought to attention when discovered by an elementary school group hiking through a public path. Their supervising teacher was apparently explaining basic history of totem poles in Native American culture when she touched SCP-1579's side and instigated its effect. According to witnesses, she fell into the artifact in a panic and repeatedly activated its effect soon dying of blood loss. Class B amnestics were administered to the remaining teacher and students, with the initial activator's disappearance attributed to a local serial killer. SCP-1579 did not feature on the path previous to this initial encounter. Now the next object is almost certainly made using either part of the previous one or one very much like it. Object PO00093, nickname Stick and Stone. Display class, mostly harmless. Function type, magic. World of origin, believed to be SCP variant Corbinic C, possibly. Description Object PO00093 is a disc containing a small chunk of iron pyrite and a sliver of wood, each about three inches in length. The wood and pyrite are contained within a disc of transparent glass measuring four inches across, which is in turn set inside a disc of purple metal alloy of unknown composition, measuring six inches across. The inner disc has a triangular pointer, which can be rotated 360 degrees. On the outside disc are pictures of various animals, including raven, grizzly bear, coyote, 
frog, otter, goose, owl, rattlesnake, eagle, beaver, caribou, woodpecker, and salmon. It is worth noting that these animals roughly correspond to the American zodiac, with coyote being substituted for wolf, caribou for deer, and with the insertion of frog, which is not part of the zodiac. When separate, the pieces of object PO93 are designated as follows. The wood chip, PO00093A, pyrite, PO00093B, inner disc, PO00093C, outer disc, PO00093D. Object PO93A is a piece of cedar with a bright green moss growing on one side. While unusually resistant to heat, it is not indestructible. When touched by a human, the anomalous properties of the object become manifest, a reddening similar in appearance and sensation to a first-degree burn will spread over the person's skin, beginning from the point of contact. Shortly thereafter, usually within a minute, the person's skin will begin to peel and slough off, revealing a new skin underneath. Along with the skin, nails, hair, and cartilaginous tissue, such as earlobes, will be altered. Uses of the wood chip will follow the following cycle regardless of the user. Raven, bear, coyote, frog. While a single use of object 93A is relatively harmless, subsequent uses become more dangerous, with the new skin being slower to form. A second use has approximately a 33% mortality rate. A third use, 66%. A fourth use by the same subject carries a 99% fatality rate. Object PO93B is a chunk of rough textured iron pyrite, also known as fool's gold. It is believed that this mineral may be from the same material as the Sanshara capstone of the Alpha Omega Federation. Object PO93B appears to amplify the effects of magical objects causing their power to increase by anywhere from 50 to 500 percent. Object PO93C, the inner disc, appears to have the properties similar to gooter glue, allowing the magical properties of two or more magical objects to be combined. Object PO93D, the outer disc, appears to be a dream charm. When placed near the head of a sleeping human, that person will begin to dream that they have become one of the 13 animals pictured on object PO93D. There appears to be no particular order to which species the dreamer will assume. Most subjects have reported a very positive experience when dreaming under the influence of object PO93D and have expressed a desire for repeat use. A few, however, have reported extremely negative experiences. This appears to have some connection to the personality of the user, with those of a more selfish character receiving a much more negative experience. Fully assembled, Object PO93 has the following anomalous properties. Upon making skin contact with Object PO93, a human user has 60 seconds in which to turn the indicator of the dial to a point to the desired image on the outer dial. At the end of 60 seconds, the user's skin will redden in the manner described under object PO93A and will slough off to reveal a new skin corresponding to the animal indicated. All hair, nails, and cartilaginous areas will be replaced by the corresponding structures of the indicated animal. Using object PO93 a second time with a second animal indicated will result in a more painful and potentially lethal transformation, as indicated above, with a 33% chance of fatality followed by a 66% chance the third time and a nearly certain death the fourth. However, if the same animal is indicated, the process, while equally painful, is much less likely to be fatal, with less than 1% possibility of fatality, which becomes completely negligible with proper medical attention at the ready. 
Such a second use causes internal structure to change. The subject bones will be broken in numerous places as the pieces shift and grow to form a tail, muzzle, and other structures belonging to the indicated species. A third use is considered completely ill-advised until at least a year has passed, as it carries a much higher probability of fatality from organ damage. Persons who have been transfigured by another means appear to have a reset and are able to use object PO93 or PO93A with no significant risk. Procedures Object PO93 is to be kept in a locked viewing case to be used only by subjects who have filled out form PO93-13. No staff are to come in physical contact with object PO93 or PO93A without proper skin protection. In the event contact does occur, affected individuals are to see Dr. Calvert immediately. Scheduled uses of Object PO93 by facility patrons are to be carried out in full view of the public in Lab 46 with medical staff on hand and modesty glass active. And right away we see the helpfulness of these joint lectures. By talking about two related paranormal objects, we learn much more about the nature of both. That's it for today's lecture. You're all invited to stay for Infinite Pizza and Anti-Gravity Cola. Thank you and good day.